context in addition to my family my husband of 25 years shalab who's a finance professional my 17 year old son rising senior my 11 year old son my rising sixth grader and my most special guest today a money author journalist one of the hottest money podcasters out there with her own podcast called so money my friend farnoosh you guys are going to have to just get into this episode because there's so much to talk about but farnoosh thank you so thank much you. for coming out i'm so honored i'm your f- you're my first friend visiting on this podcast and of course it had to be about money <laughs> it was my choice oops sorry it was my choice to be here they, i don't know i know it was it your choice to be here <laughs> well they they have no choices yeah They're exactly like, hey, come on farnoosh like you know yes. don't yes. ask them trick questions <laughs> But we had to have you here because ever since we've been connected, you know, it's just been a real connection, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. About money, because everybody has something that they worry about with money. And of course, we worry about everything that has everything to do with money. So we're going to get right into it. How is everybody going to Greece this year? I know, right? How is everybody? Are we sure it's Greece, though, or not just like a fake Greece backdrop, <laughs> right? Because the, the technology is very good. I the mean, green screen is very convincing. I mean, I do that too. Sometimes right? I Photoshop myself and my friend's photos. Seriously? Yeah, because it does look cool. It's free. It's free. And it looks like you <laughs> could be there. Looks like you're so much more popular. If three of your friends are there and your head is kind of poking out, who's going to know? No, but in all seriousness, I think that it's a combination of pent-up demand. People still are reeling from the pandemic. And so they've got all those travel dollars they haven't spent. Some people are just rich. Some people are using their parents' money and some people are going way 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 into debt so yeah we're seeing all the fun right now but i think that you know let the time go on you're gonna see like uh was it taylor swift right she's helping the economy she's literally helping the economy hotels are actually seeing a profit for the first time since the pandemic but i i'm not i'm an optimist but i have to believe that some of those people are not paying with cash and I think that the next article, the headline oh, is going yeah. to be that, you know, that people are more indebted now than ever. But, OK, since Taylor Swift and I have kids and they also yeah. recently wanted to go to another concert and all these things are so expensive. The concert like Drake is a is a singer. I don't know, you must know him. He, they wanted to go. And do, do parents not just say no? I mean, it's 400, 500, 800 dollars a seat. Are you kidding me? I know, but you know what? Taylor Swift's 3000 so that's really, really <laughs> smart price anchoring. You could just say, well, mom, at least it's not $3,000, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, at least it's not. <laughs> See, they already like you. I know, I I'm trying to win them. I'm trying to win. I'm, I'm trying to score the points. Villain. And this episode, once again, somehow, I'm yeah, going to be you the know, one. Zara, you know better than anyone that the internet creates FOMO. Yeah. And it's not just about your kids' desires. It's about, as a parent, you know, like you want to keep up with your peers too. If your peers are sending their kids to these places and these concerts, I don't know. I'm not there yet. My kids are fortunately still young enough and I ask me for, you know, five hundred, eight hundred dollar concert tickets. But yeah. what would you say if your mom said no? And I'm sure she says no. Well, I mean, uh, I went to it, so eventually she said yes. But in the beginning, she was like, "Hell no." Well, what what was the convincing factor? Uh, my friend actually, who's usually not in the city. He was like willing to go and his parents are like close friends of uh, my mom. So she was like, okay, I trust them. I trust the kid. I'm yeah. not getting you like a GA, which is like you stand up in front of them. You have to sit down and like, oh, you're not moving. You buy all these expensive tickets to stand for four hours on the floor. Oh my God. Do you know those are the expensive tickets? So we had to like, it wasn't even just do you go. It was like, are you going to pay a thousand dollars to just stand there? And, you know, as moms, you're like, uh, in my head, I'm just thinking every, there's going to be a stampede. Bad oh, things yeah. are going to happen because that's what happens at these mega venues. Because Astroworld ruined it for us. So was it worth it? Was it worth it? 100%. It's so worth it. It was <laughs> such a life changer. Like, Is that where you had the weed? They were talking I, about? I never what? had weed. No one what? had the weed. Oh, I thought he had, he told mom. The show is very I different. didn't have weed. <laughs> Oh. I've never smoked weed. I will put that out there. I've never smoked weed. Okay, okay. Maybe I got confused. Sorry. How did, but you got confused? <laughs> I got confused. I thought that's how he stood up for that long in that stupid concert. I didn't but even stand. I wasn't even standing up. I was sitting down. We oh. didn't buy the standing up seats. Okay, Who okay, are you okay. talking to, Shala? I got confused. For <laughs> you. Did you buy weed? No, I mean, I think weed is very good. Weed is but good. I have no, it is. Weed. Sh- what? It's better than alcohol. Yeah, it's that medicinal. I agree with. 
Farosh, I'm so sorry. Digress. We are, we are dysfunctional and it's going to be on tape. <laughs> and, and yeah. I'm here for it. So Shalom, like you said FOMO. As a, I know as women what we get FOMO. The, the vacation photos, the outfitting, you know, the okay. But what's a, what's a FOMO type thing for you on social media? That you look at and you wish you had it or you, you can't believe yeah, you don't I mean, have it. Maybe a Brioni jacket. <laughs> You know, a, a um, Brioni jacket, Brunello, Brunello as well, Brunello, yeah, like nice jackets Am I or saying that right? like golf clubs or mm. you know, golf. um, you know, you, you are Indian. Playing golf. You don't play I don't know, golf. I'm Mykonos, go to Greece. I would like to go too. You so you look at the post and you think, why am I not there? Yes, you do. Hundred percent. No, you. He you does. Do too? I, I don't know, like no he doesn't I'm gonna tell him what he feels I don't like going on vacation so it's I'm not like you don't like going on vacations why what? not you don't what? like fun just what do you a do lot of fun? work to like oh, he's trying to get something from you after this he's uh, gonna, uh, he's scam scheming right yeah I, I got a lot of work <laughs> well I will say that the kids do hate the flying process I mean, I don't like the beach. The, the airplane. You don't like the yeah, beach? I don't like the beach. Oh, no. Then what do you like in vacations? I think because as a parent, I don't, no, I'm like, I so chose stressful. this. It's so stressful. You Only, can't relax. No, you can't. Your kid's eating sand. Sand's everywhere. Yeah. It's hot. And, you know, you have a Geico flag. It's the only entertainment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always a Geico flag. It's always you know? a Geico flag. Yeah. And it's like 100 degrees these summer, nowadays. Mm. And I'm like, what? This I chose this. Yeah. So you that's like me. Universal like guys, right? You like Universal, both yeah. Of you? But I would rather stay in New York City and earn our yeah, me too. Both of you, yeah, 100%. yeah. You know, I, I do think that the kids are kind of over the the process of traveling. Yeah. Because between the airplane, the secure, it's like it's it, you know your delay, then your can't. So we've had so much of that for work trips and family trips. Well, you know, they say that when it comes to appreciating experiences and creating lasting memories, like. Actually, the, the process of get I mean, it's called delayed gratification is what it is. But they say people who have to wait in line for going to a Broadway show or going to a concert, they will actually, at the end of it, when they reflect on that experience, have so much excitement about it. Because I, I, yeah. like that's, there's that's true. even just waiting in line if you're with cool people, mm -hmm. like there's an experience to be had there. There's mm -hmm. value with in that. cool people like your mom yeah. and dad. Yeah, no, because he's so mind next is time going... you're thinking about like, oh, but there's going to be a line and it's not like think about it as like. Maybe this is all part of, you know, how to make the experience more interesting. Or well, or you do buy the fast pass where you can yeah, you <laughs> invest in that. Because as a parent, you're going to lose your mind. I mean, as okay. a parent, I feel like I will invest in anything that will save me time. Right? Which I don't know if teens, I don't know. I feel like that's something that you learn only as you get older. But I also think time. that that's more a woman thing. Because my husband and I disagree on this one because you brought that up, the time thing. Yeah. Because there are times when I mean I'm I'm really bad. I'll take an yeah. Uber everywhere. Yeah. But I use the Uber as a backseat. It's my office. Well, it's, it's totally like it's I, right? above ground, like consistent Wi-Fi. And if there is a, an issue, an emergency, you can just get out. Get out. And he we disagree all the time because he's like I take the subway and I save the money and he does and I get it. We live in New York City. Also, it's predictable the subway Uber gets stuck in traffic. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. you know, and they're charging twenty five percent. Pros cons, yeah. but I think it's a little generational. But, like, but I'm right. Can we just? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Score scores on that. one <laughs> zero. Um, I think a little bit of it is generational. Like my mother will spend hours online returning something for right. sixteen dollars. You know, my father will go and he can save point oh five percent on his mortgage and he will refinance because <laughs> he just can't go to bed thinking that there was a mathematical time, Dad. You know. What's that worth? But the, but the refinance thing is a thing. I mean, but not like... It's going to make mathematical sense. Sometimes, but not all the time. That is something that we disagreed with and he actually somehow managed I mean, it, to get... Yeah, we refinanced twice. If it, if it may, yeah, if you get a good rate yeah, yeah, yeah. and... But it's work. It's a whole process. It's a whole process. And if it restarts your clock, like if you're at 20, you're 26 right. of your 30-year mortgage, like just go the four extra years. Right. So Holiday. what are the big mistakes you see with people with money like the big things that you I'm sure I mean people come to you advise people on how yeah. to build wealth you advise people mm -hmm. like what are the big things that are common pitfalls you see especially like with the young ones you know well I would say first of all we don't talk about it enough as a culture 
I mean, and that is why we are here today like, doing this podcast. I don't care what you want to talk about when it comes to money. Just talk about it. Because just getting your, your juices flowing, getting the ideas going, the curiosity, it just isn't there. Do you like talking about it within like relationships, like friends or like, um, like all of it, everything. all of the above, all so like of the even above. like me with my friends, I should be talking about like, it. You asked me before you we were rolling, how did you get into money? I said, it's because I had two parents that talked about money all the time for, it wasn't like they always talked about money in, in good ways, but I grew up with a fluency around it so that when I got older, I didn't approach it like everybody else, like it's a taboo topic. Like I can't talk about it. There are right. legit people who are wealthy who say, you never talk about money. Right. It's just not what you do. It's rude. People you know? don't even talk yeah. about sex, but not money. Exactly. Or their, you know, their health diagnoses and all the things like we, for some reason, money, because here's what it, and tell me if you agree with this or not, but especially I'm curious to hear from younger people, like money, my, my net worth is my self-worth or how much I make or what my family makes somehow identifies who I am as a person, my personality. Yeah. I mean, hundred yeah. percent. Because it also dictates your actions. Like if you have more money, you'll be able to do more things. If you have less money, you'll like save more. You'll be spending less on food. And like that affects your mindset in life. Yeah. So I think for all these reasons, money is emotional, you know, more than any other topic probably because it just hits so close to, you know, how you were raised, your identity, all of that. So I think number one is like just start asking questions, show some curiosity, talk to your partner, talk to your kids, talk to your therapist, whoever you feel... So don't get me started on therapists. <laughs> I know you don't like therapists. Mm. It's three hundred and fifty dollars you know, an hour. Mm. I need a therapist. <laughs> there are financial therapists now. No. Yes, it's a that's thing. not a thing. A, What's a there's a financial Maybe. advisor who manages your money and gives you a financial plan. But you know, money's so emotional that before you even get to the plan, you have to first talk about how you feel about money, how you were raised around <laughs> money, why you have trauma around money, and that's where someone I who like it is a therapist with a money background can help you. And that's actually a job. So I yeah, no it's great. What? Weird? I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. I like cannot believe that's a thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And people pay money. People pay money. To unravel their financial feelings. Exactly. Feelings is it the same money. price as a regular therapist? Uh, yeah. Then they, usually these people are clinical psychologists. They're. In I'm sure they trash all the immigrant parents. <laughs> Because we get blamed for everything. We get blamed for telling the kids, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Immigrants inherently, like Shalav and me, your parents, we, we like live in fear. But it's a good thing. Fear. I mean, I'm all about fear, guys. I think mm. fear, I write about it, I think that it needs a rebrand. You know, we think of fear in our financial lives. Fear has been my friend. The number of times that I have been afraid of losing money, of making a stupid mistake with my money, of you know, not asking for a raise because, oh my gosh, what if I, they fire me or they don't like me? I say no, you know, because there's always something scarier that you're not considering, which is that if you don't ask for the money, you won't get it. And then you'll have to retire, you know, poor, poor, very leaning on your kids. And that's no one's dream. So I think that for me, fear has always been a healthy stimulant. I remember in college, I opened up my bank account and I had negative it was like negative $160. And it's because I had gone around town with my debit card yeah. and it was all these overdraft fees. And I just didn't know that I was running on empty and recognized that I needed to make money. I was making a lot of money that summer. I had like five jobs. So I was like, how is this possible? It's because I wasn't else. You can be afraid of making, of making money and then you go and you make the money, but you got to also be afraid of Losing that money, not managing it well. Yeah. That's what I wasn't afraid of. So I wasn't keeping track. And But you know what can help these kids and your kids and the husband is if the wife or the Why mom manages the everybody's money. No, no. <laughs> no I mean, you, like I'm like, almost 40 years old. For, sorry, what? sorry. Almost 48 years old. Sorry. He's for, he just, yes. He just made it seem who, like. Who manages I, the money in your marriage? I, I mean. I think it's joint, I would say. Yeah. yeah. It's mostly me. <laughs> no, it's joint, but it should be me. Yeah. Don't you think if we as the women took control, Look, I think it's just a lot of work. Like your money, their money, I'm managing for sure. 
even what when they grow up, though? Like, what even when they grow up and have their own accounts, I'm going to have access to all their accounts. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have access to all their credit that. cards. No, why? What do you not know? Well, I mean, I mean, there's like some sort of like you can have access to like see how much money I'm making or whatever. No, but, like, but why would why are you even hesitating? I should be able to see everything. Because let's say I spend my money on something or I do a decision that I don't think you would agree with. I don't want to do myself. There is the first reason why I should have access, right? He's uh, well, how, 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 what age are we talking about here? He's uh, he's almost eighteen. Yeah, but then okay. So, yeah. but then after that, like college, my daughter, I um, she's yeah. twenty. Yeah. I have access to everything she does. When does it stop? No, does it never? No, come no, on, come on. <laughs> I don't look at my daughter's bills or anything. <laughs> oh. I mean, I don't want to pay them. <laughs> oh, I do. Do, they have, do you have jobs? Do you do you work? Right now, I'm just working on my college app. Yeah. So it's more just like getting the pieces together for that. Because next year you'll apply to college. No, this, this year I apply to college. Year, next month. Oh my god. So that's why, why this yeah. summer he's he was working last summer, but this summer because of the apps and the college apps, and then next you know they say that the the adults who become entrepreneurs and 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 I guess wealthy I suppose too, they all had jobs when they were 16, 15 yeah, years old. It's I not. See it. It's not a coincidence. Yeah. I see it. I think if you learn to make money. And then also learn to support your parents early in life. <laughs> Give some of the money to your parents. Then you learn that that is the way that you're going to. And then if some woman or man enters your life and says, this is so overbearing and all, you don't need to pay attention to them. You just tell them, thank you so much. I'm not dating you anymore. <laughs> Okay. Wait, I have a question. I, I mean, question. I, isn't what you just explained generational wealth? I mean, that's kind yeah, of it, that right? Okay. I have a question. Okay. Yeah. When you're, because I'm about, like, I'm turning 18, I'm about to have my own, I'm about to open my own bank account, and everyone's talking about how, like, everyone always tells you, like, when you're 18, you have to start doing your taxes and start doing all this stuff, and I was just wondering, like, when you're looking at money, do you view it as something that, like, you have to have a job and then save as much as possible and just keep saving over and over, like, saving throughout time no. to keep making more money? No. Here's what I want you to do. Before you start thinking about money, think about what you want. What are your goals? What's the point? Because just making money to make money, like who cares, right? I mean, some people that's actually what they think and those people are just hamsters on a wheel. They are not in this game of money for any sort of pursuit beyond just making money. And that's not how you wanna exist, right? And and I tell you, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people who um, maybe didn't have money growing up or, you know, that money is not the goal, right? Money is a tool to get you what you want. So then you can go back to your job or whatever you're doing to make money and then be more strategic about how you're making that money, how much you're charging. You know, does that make sense to you? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, in the beginning, yeah, when you're 18, you just got to learn how to like do the job and get the money input output. Like that's important. Those are very basic things. You got to learn your taxes. You got to learn like save you know, make, spend less than you make, but eventually once you choose a career and hopefully you're making money that you feel like is being fueled by a passion or whatever, that you're just, uh, you're doing it because you, ha you have goals in mind. Yeah. It's more meaningful that way. And you're more likely to stick with it and want to make that money. Yeah. And your passion can be, I want to be a doctor. That can be a Absolutely. passion. Absolutely. Or a lawyer or an engineer. <laughs> oh, you know, like you know? your passion yeah. doesn't, because these or kids. Or a painter. Or like a no, book. see, I knew it. I knew he was going to step gonna in. Turn right, turn I knew that you were going to step in and be a good cop because this is what he does. Farnoosh, are you watching this? He, he, oh, be a painter. Right, right. Because every parent is dreaming that their kid goes and becomes a painter. <laughs> or a comedian or a journalist. No, right? I, <laughs> I don't even advocate my life to anybody. I, like, I'm myself, like, I wish I could be a Google engineer. You, I just didn't have it. But these guys, you can, because the minute you say to a kid in America, you can follow your passion, their brain immediately goes to all the wrong things. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Okay, so I know as soon as I said passion, it was I like, like I Zarna, can't. it was like, it was getting hot over this here. This is like, yeah. you know, it, I could like feel that my blood <laughs> was steam. just like, no, the she's steam. supposed to be my friend. We I'm kind so of sorry. I, we prepped you for this. I, I failed. I, oh I even God. spent Don't hour. listen to anything I say. Yes, please. Basically. And, and, and essentially, with him the advice that you gave him like things there should be a bigger purpose than the money itself and that purpose can be directed to your mom and dad who will tell you what is your purpose I mean listen I will be very honest I know that my parents would never want me to support them it's not their goal to raise me to then give them money although that's different in every culture I think that I had a consciousness around that growing up I was like I want to be able to make enough money so that if 
God forbid my parents need me that I can step in. I mean, I think that's a fair that's a fair goal, right? I mean, you want to be able to help your loved like ones. In America, as a parent, you're not allowed that expectation. Mm -hmm. That expectation exists in in other countries. In right. India, we when we grew up, your parents could say, "We expect you to take care of us when we get older." But here, you're not allowed. You're supposed to give to your kids as if it's the biggest joy of oh, your yeah. life. The number of families who would sort of pay, like literally sell everything to send their kid to college. And then they have nothing in their 401ks. They have nothing for retirement. They're not doing anyone any favors, you know? Are you listening, babe? I am listening. <laughs> you have a question for me? Yeah, I do have a question. Yeah, hey. So at my age, kids are sp starting to spend a little bit of money. So Whose money? Their parents' money yeah. or money that they made on their own doing something. I don't know. Um, what do you think is a reasonable amount of, like of allowance mm -hmm. for a kid to have Ooh. Ooh. per thing, per like week What's going day. on in New York City? What are the kids getting in an allowance? This is gonna make the news, y'all. Like mm -hmm. this is uh, hot. This, yeah. I wanna know. Like one of my friends was getting like $20 a week. Okay. Okay. I think that's enough. That's, it's what are they using? The so I think that allowance is so subjective. Okay. Yes, I think there is too much. I think that, you know, just giving your kid a credit card or um, whatever they want all the time is not ideal. But I think, I think 20, look, it used to be a dollar for every age. What? Every year of age. No. Like, so if you're 11, so you get $11. <laughs> $11. That was in the 1800s, apparently, when things I'm cost. I'm happy to give my husband $48. That's like a bottle of water. Eleven dollars, right? Um, but like my kid, I think that I think you age out of that around six, seven years old. Because I think when <laughs> yeah. you're six, seven, and yeah. you're getting six, seven dollars a week, like you're rich. But mm -hmm. once you're to your point, once you're eleven, twelve, you're hanging out with your friends, you're going to the movies, you're going to the whatever, whatever kids do these days, um, and you're expected to like maybe pay for your friends sometimes, or yeah. you know, things cost money, especially in New York. I think that. As a family, you have to decide what are the things that you are going to be responsible for? Because not every family, that's not the same, right? In my family growing up, my parents were smart. They were like, we're not giving you an allowance because Zarna, they didn't want me going out and getting anything that was oh. without their permission. Yes. It was a control thing. Uh, yeah, and I agree with that. They were so like, whatever no you allowance. need, we will cover. Yeah. And if there's something that you really want, like we should be involved in that decision. Yeah. So that's why I got working real fast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like job at 14 and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, it's subjective to your answer your question. I think $20 um, a week. It depends on like what your, that kid's expected to cover. Like, is this kid? So what do you think would be a reasonable amount at like older ages? Like, like 17? Yeah. Like at his age. I think that the responsible thing is for the kid to come up with a budget and say, this is like what I anticipate shelling out every week. This is my lunch money. This is my subway money. This is my clothing every month, whatever, whatever. But speaking of budget and his age, they'd go on dates. Yeah. Not real dates, but like little four dates. And is uh, what trends are you seeing? Are the boys paying for the girls? Are they splitting the check? Like, w w what are you seeing? What are not dating anymore? I've been married no, for a long time. No, but I have people who yeah. tell you that what the story. I mean, of, I don't know about teens. I know I can tell you about like people our age yeah. in the thirties and forties. I think that it is. Oh man, it's all over the place. This is the most heated. Who pays? I think that I'll tell you what I used to do when I was dating. If a guy asked me out. And it was his invitation to go out. You know, I would come with my own money. I fully expected to split the check. If I never wanted to see him again, I paid. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I don't want there to be any misunderstanding because sometimes money, depending on how I, right. what my relationship with money is and that person's relationship with money. If I'm saying, you know, please, yes, pay for me. This person might think this is yeah. money is a tool to get me. Right. And it's not. Mm -hmm. So it's complicated. It's layered. I think to simplify it, the expectations should just be that we're going to split it. Sometimes, you know, I get it. It's more romantic gesture. But I think that ultimately for this relationship, if you're looking at this long term, it's like you got to expect that there's going to be a little bit of give and take. You know, if you pay for the your date on the first round and then 
your date next time wants to pay for you, I think you should allow it because it's probably if especially this person your initiated. Your mom and I never split. Yeah. I paid every See, time. but that's yeah, he did. He did. Cultural, yeah. traditional. And we ultimately maybe. got married and raised three beautiful kids. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I think there's men on the internet watching this, like applauding you. <laughs> all that. Yo, you think women he know that? <laughs> like he told you're getting me, fans. Like, he was like, let me just step in and let people <laughs> love letters. Um, because <laughs> I do think that, you know, look, I'm romantic. I think that there's really something nice when someone extends that and d treats you and spending women these like we just want to be like, I don't want to plan the date. I don't want to oh, think but about I, the I date. Say, hold on. Your mom did put me through business school. She paid the tuition. Ah. So the, there's a scorecard, like a financial scorecard. That, Who's invested that business more in each happened other. after marriage, but she did pay for it. The whole thing. Yeah, but my whole comedy business, he yeah. is the main investor, let's just say. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's like, given, no, it's no, but that's 20 years after but that. But it's, yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. that was when we were young. Yeah, when we were young. And that's true. we were in business school and she paid for both years. Yeah. What would you like to do on what your do first you, date? I want to yeah. know what he's seen. Like when you, because there was a time when two Jamba juices were getting charged on his credit card. <laughs> and I was like, that's a, first of all, I don't even agree with one. Mm. So what are you seeing? I mean, I, I think, I think it, based on what I've seen and like experience, I think it depends on like how expensive the thing is too. Like if it's like a cup of like like Starbucks drink, like a mango dragon fruit or whatever, then it's like fine what for about like mango, mango dragon fruit. I haven't been to Starbucks in a long time. Oh, okay. That's, it's a thing. It's the <laughs> yeah. are lining so up. Like if I was like if I was like with my friend or whatever, and I was like walking into a Starbucks and I was like, I want to get a drink. And they were like, okay, I'll get a drink too. And I was already getting a drink. I'd be like, okay, I'll just pay for you. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, like, you mean girl or boy? Girl, girl or boy. Do you have a friend who's a moocher? Yeah. We all have I have, a, I have like a bunch right? of friends. Oh my friend. God. Dude, I have like, I have one. I'm not going to say his name, obviously, but he, he knows who he is. Does he, he watch the show? He, um, I hope he does, but for the scene. But he literally, he takes everything. He will try as he owes. What do we think about He owes all of us like thousands of dollars. What? I, I like. But why don't you guys say no? Because like it, 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 it's like little things that adds up up yeah, and over to get time. Thing. I think it's like an, it's like one Uber ride or like like ship away at it. Like it's never like the one big ask. Mm. Yeah, it's like it always feels like oh come on, it's a little. Thing. It's usually the richest kid. Oh, he's he's okay. Kid. That's been my experience. Yeah. Sometimes it was just like the, the person who has the means for whatever reason that is, is always bumming. I had a, my brother and I are eleven years apart. He's younger. Mm. He had this friend who would drop the my my brother was living in New York at the time. His friend would come visit. The father would give this friend $600 for the weekend for two nights in New York. Wow. This kid would blow through it drugs oh, and, great. and then go bum money off my brother who is, by the way, he's sleeping on my brother's couch. And my brother was like, he didn't buy me a single drink all weekend. I said, you had to drop that friend. Do you need me to call this friend? What is his phone number? Like he has a problem. Mm. You are being taken advantage of. Okay. So in a, on a related note, but slightly more adult situation, dinners with friends, dinners uh, with couples. Mm -hmm. I'm vegetarian. I don't drink. Mm -hmm. My husband has his restrictions on what he eats and drinks. We got, I feel like when you go out as a group, people go nuts. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to order everything. <laughs> like bottles, bottles flowing. People yeah. don't understand even how to do 20% of tips. So they just write any number. Oh my God. And then people like me who like ate the veggie burger. Yeah, yeah. And had water and up yeah. splitting the No, bills. I hear you. I hear you. Did you see the people who made the news? There was like a TikTok viral video. Six people or eight people go out to a birthday dinner. The bill was like over $6,000. Wow. What the, did they eat? The guy was so mad. He was like, I had a salad. Yeah. I don't I don't know they were getting bottle service it was getting out of control and then the birthday girl wanted everybody to split it so they made the news it was literally i read about it in the post um so don't do that i think look that's a did they ultimately split it i, I think it's i don't know host. how the story ended oh, yeah. i think i think it's the host like the, whenever i've i've seen like a bunch of dinners because like we have a large family because like we're indian and i've seen like it's always like whoever's hosting like if we're if we're going out for dinner and my mom's like 
Um, okay. Your then, mom is so generous. I literally have yeah. three tote bags. I've seen first 15 <laughs> minutes. I have so many snacks. Yeah. And that's just how it is. Like when my cousins were, or my cousins are now moved here or like, I'm not saying like this is the relationship, but if she was like, okay, you guys should come and have a dinner or, and we'll go to a restaurant. Like it's expected of her to pay. But like, if I went to Ohio and saw like my aunt and mm-hmm. I went and they took me out to dinner, it would be expected for them to pay. And I think that's just yeah. how it is within our culture. I think it's so much easier when you have a shared culture, it's family, and there's been patterns already that have yeah. played out. Like you just know because that's what you how you grow up. Like it's fine. I think to answer your questions, Arna, about well, can you just pause one minute because I want to hear this answer. But the shared culture thing is a reason why if you marry an Indian girl and your mom <laughs> finds what? the person who is the right culture, your dad and I can go through the whole wedding process, and you know to, because that would help. That would help with right. I mean. It would help you. Yeah. <laughs> when that's what it's about. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So and now can you okay. With, so what about when oh the culture is not shit? I mean, do you have friends like that though? Like you're worried yeah. seriously you're gonna go out and, and have to. F- it happens all. Wow. The time. It's a shame all the comedy business. Not, okay, let's. No, okay, but, but he doesn't want to admit it. I am the one I mean, who. I want to have them as friends still. See exactly. He, but I've been going to. They will order like, whatever that yeah. is the seafood tower. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here's a trick. If you know you're going to go out and get, you know, your water and your side salad or your cheeseburger or your veggie burger and everyone else is getting whatever you need to leave early and say, yeah. I'm leaving. Who can That's I Venmo so before the bill arrives? Because before yeah. they're like, oh, well, it's a thousand dollars split eight ways. Be like, you know, who should I pay? And they'll be like, oh, well, what did you have? Right. Oh. It's a little bit easier that yeah. way. It's a trick that I used to do in my 20s. I used to have a girlfriend who would never show up for dinner, but she would come for just dessert or just a drink afterwards. And later we found out it was because she didn't want to pay right. all this money for eating out. Um, she was also vegetarian. And so you have to like just work around it. Leaving early helps. Well, th- there's also that the problem of paying for things that you don't want. And then the opposite problem, which we also have, which he is not going to want to name because he never wants to be a bad guy on a podcast, but I will. It's the people who come and they're like, I'm not really hungry. Oh, why are you even out? Yeah. But, you know, what are you, you, know are you talking about, dinner? right? I don't want anything. But they eat I'm going to have a cup yeah, of no, 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 no. Okay, water, fry. hot water with lemon. And no. then they're like picking on everything that oh, you Oh, oh, who does that? Do people, come on, you know that happens. Come no, on. Well, I feel like that's a sitcom. I mean, I think that that is, if that, I mean, I would say something. I can't. A little like um, it, is, it happens all the time. Though. What is that's going it. on? Yeah. What is going on? I don't know. I think that they're mostly his listen, friends, the ones who do. What's that? the expression? Like fool me once. Yeah. Chill yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. You know, like if you're always going out with that friend, why are you always going out with that friend? Yeah, but you know, people are like imperfect. You know that. I'm gonna have no fr- as it is. The threshold is Let's here. You and me <laughs> go out all, all the time. The I'm a really great date. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we will sit there and like calculate yeah, yeah. down to the last dollar. Okay, so these are mistakes and things. What yeah. are some good things, like good trends that you've seen in money? Yeah. Like things that are helping people post-COVID bring a modicum of relief well, and you know, you, you kind of, we kind of laughed about financial therapy, but I definitely think that the, we are talking more about money and mental health because it's so important. Okay. okay, I'm listening. I'm no, unpacking. I'm listening. My mind is open. It's because My it's not just open. spreadsheets in black and white. It's not just right. like, you know, dollars and cents. Like money is really complex. COVID um, did a number on Ollie. And I think that uh, we had a lot of time to think about like, what is our life even amounting to? How have I been spending my money? Um, am I even happy at work? Am I happy the way that I'm making money? I think these are all really healthy thought bubbles and conversations and we're doing that at least. And I think that, you know, I started in this business in 2000 and like 1999 actually was my first internship at money magazine. This is before the internet really took off before forget social media. And so we didn't really have a lot of experts or even books. It was, it was a lot of the same people 
talking about how to build wealth. And so there wasn't a lot of representation. There wasn't a lot of inclusivity. Fast forward to today, I think to your answer your question about what's going on that's good, I think is that we just have a, like, a much bigger community of people talking about money, different looking oh, people, yeah. different backgrounds, different points of view. And I think that's that is progress. And I do think that social media too has brought out, like, I feel like there are TikToks yeah. about money. Yeah. How people spend money and even like what you just described, six thousand dollar yeah d- dinner bill news. and now they're all talking about it and it's starting a conversation about like how right is it and yeah. all. This is a function of social media. It is, and you know, on the on the flip side of that though, I think social media can be problematic when it comes to money. I mean, we know that the studies show that like you go down those rabbit holes, you are yeah. doom scrolling, and suddenly you have bought you know, an air purifier with, oh, yeah. you know, or, or a trip to Greece or like a lipstick or like $800 worth of skincare because yeah. the influencer online made you do it. Yeah. Do you see anything that you like to buy online? Oh, you know what? I know what the kids spend money on. Do you know how much video games upsell the kids? Oh yeah. It's just, I used to do that. But you know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah. Like if you're when in the little. game, then you can buy a it's skin so and money. buy oh. like a gold coin or whatever the thing oh, is. Oh, the skins. The skin. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. And you can buy, like, do they still do that? No, when you get older, that doesn't happen. It's so no, much literally. money. When you're, it's like I used to $60. spend a lot of money when I was little. But not anymore? Not yet. And I mean, how, I about, really. how about apps like iTunes and stuff? Like, what is your biggest expense, the two of you? Or like food. money? Food. Yeah, food. Food, food, food and drinks. Food well, two, two growing boys, too. Yeah. yeah. And they're out, they play sports. It's right, thing. right. And how about for you? I think it is food. Food. Mm. Food is a big I am constantly ordering groceries. Mm. Right. Do you order in also a lot? Like, we do, we try to be more conscious about it, but like, I'm tired of cooking, man. Yeah. I cooked a lot during the pandemic. It's not even my thing. I'm not like no. one of those food channel, food mm. blogging watchers. Like, I'm not, I just, I don't care that much about food. I know. Oh, sue me. I like to go out, be entertained, eat. Like, I like the socialization yeah, around yeah. food, but I'm not like dying to eat something at some random restaurant. So we eat very boringly at home. And yeah, sometimes we order in because, again, I value my time. Right. But I will say the Grab Hubs, the Seamless, like, you order a pizza, you think it's tw- like $20 I, I mean, and suddenly it's 75 because of the, the delivery fee, and the gas fee. Every restaurant now, it used to just be a few and they would make the news because I wrote the article. They were like, <laughs> I had to like really do the research. I'm like, it's not all the restaurants. Literally now it's every restaurant, including yeah. the pizzerias and even, you know, the salad bar. They are charging 3% for using your credit card. Yeah. They are passing on that fee to oh the consumer. Oh, my God. And look, I get it. It's I'm a lot. Dipping is out of control. Oh, my God. Can we not? I'm actually giving it to you. Uh, if, so the credit card companies, cash. if you pay in cash, you don't have to pay it. Mm-hmm. But it's not like they're giving you a discount. The, the price on the menu is the price of cash. Then if you pay with credit yeah. card, you have to assume th- another 3% surcharge. I then a 20% deli. tip. And, and then, then a 20% tip. And then sometimes, depending on where you're buying from. I mean, some restaurants are even literally, they're like, health insurance for for our staff, five dollars. Oh my god! I've done, look it up. I've done the stories. I have the I have the receipts. <laughs> but for like for delivery at home, people are tipping twenty percent. Well, that I usually seems completely no insane. no no no. I think they're that, carrying a yeah. bag. Well, they're driving and there's gas and, you know, I don't do the 20%. I just kind of do like, okay, where is this restaurant in relationship to my house? Right. Oh. <laughs> is it 30 minutes away? Is it five minutes away? Is it pizza? Is it 18 boxes of sushi? Cause you're having a party. Like you gotta put it, right, right, right. you gotta be like but realistic. Do restaurants change the prices as well for delivery. So if you go into their restaurant, they're selling Sometimes, something for 10. But who's checking? Yeah. Right? Like easier. you're comparing and who's doing mm-hmm. that? But I'm sure that's happening. Like when I tip, I tip a lot less now because the seamless, like I order a seamless mostly in Uber Eats. The fees that they attach, like the seamless fees is like, there's like three of them and it always makes it so expensive that I just like, it's so controversial less less. because we have no recourse. We, we get angry. And so who are we going to get angry at? 
the driver who doesn't even really work for them, who's not setting these prices. And then they're the ones getting shafted. I feel like, you know, I get it. We're frustrated. We've given the seamless and the grub hubs all of our money and now we have nothing left. (laughs) And now we still have to tip somebody. And then they charge you a service fee, which is confusing because is that a tip? No, that's not going to the person who's delivering it. So yeah, God knows what just go pick it up. Well, sometimes (laughs) the delivery person will even say that they don't get the tip. Oh, I had, I know that, right? Like I've had, people yeah. say to me that I know you put the number but it's not going to come to us One of the so jobs now, you're, now you're like have? you're really not sure what you've oh done my God. that I didn't know so who yeah. does that go to no, no I guess they the want the cash tip I, okay I, so that's a good tip no, no. <laughs> that's a good tip do a cash tip I had a woman deliver pizzas over to my son's my house it was my kid's birthday party I had like five boxes of pizza so I gave her like ten dollars and she was like thank you so much you're the first person who's tipped me all day oh it was two God. in the afternoon I said um <clears throat> what this is a nice suburb like I don't understand Yay. who's not tipping you she's like you wouldn't believe it yeah you wouldn't believe, believe it. it you know his mom the worst tipper ah. I'm not even gonna you know what I mean I don't yes. know what it is I don't know it's so it's but we could talk we could do a whole I'll come back we'll do we'll yeah, like yeah, tipping yeah, yeah. One okay one. I have a culture question and this is like my favorite question to ask about money just because it's like really, really relatable for me okay let's say I got a hundred dollars what should I be how should I be splitting up that money like everyone every time I search it up or I see someone talk about it it's always like put 50% into investments 25% into savings and then have 25% for like guilt free spending hmm. but hello but, where is but what, what you give to mom oh, okay well okay. guilt free spending yeah guilt free spending and it's like I, I'm just wondering like what in your mind like what's your split yeah I think once you're when, I wouldn't start with like a hundred a hundred dollars is like I don't know. That's sort of whatever. Like I would say, once you start making money consistently and you have like a paycheck coming in, then I think you automatically save 10, 15% cash. Like just put it away. That's like for you, uh, think about it. Like you want to buy your mom something nice for mm-hmm. mother's day or whatever. Um, a rainy day, you're, you know, you need a new tire on your bike or whatever. Then another 10 to 15% invest. But like where? Like what do I invest in? So uh, I'm like, I like boring stuff, guys. I don't like to go. I don't pick the meme stocks. I don't do Not one crypto. stock. Like are there any like no super crypto. safe investments where like if I put this in it, it's going to grow over 500. time? I think that you could do it. In, right now, interest rates are pretty good. You know, 5%. You could find a 4 or 5% CD. Which oh, okay. is, you know, um, a, a certificate of deposit, you go down the street, go open up at a bank or online, which means that after a six month period or a year, it'll be four or five percent growth, which is like we haven't that's seen that mm-hmm. in a long time. So I think that that's something that I would advise. But also that's not really the stock market. But I think so. I think what yeah, you're asking yeah. is like the stock market. So I would just go and get a plane, what's called index fund which is tracks the U.S. stock market. And your goal is not to go in there and like check it every day. You're like, I'm just going to keep adding to this nest egg. It's going to grow. Some days it's going to flop. Some days it's going to grow. But after 10, 20 years, it will accumulate. It will compound much better than if I just like put in a bank account. And that's what I think, you know, it's that we were talking about social media and the influence on money. It's like, well, that's the one thing I really can't stand is just like these stupid, dumb stock recommendations. You know, mm. there's well, movies people, about it now. People uh-huh. talking like happening. they know what they're oh doing. My God. That is the biggest. Pro- I mean, he's in the business. Literally he a knows. guy. I was on the train. He was getting on the train. It was like Amtrak. He's like, sell at 40. Buy at 30. I'm like, who's buying on? Who's on the phone with you? Like, no this is a 21st guy. What are you like from Wall Street movie? Like, are you Gordon Gecko? Like, what's going on? You know, yeah, and there's you're in the subway. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, That's he's so completely funny. acting. Yeah. I'm in a movie. He's trying to impress you. Yeah. so money podcast he has no idea <laughs> 30 so, million downloads sir i think she's I mean, it all. A, a guy knocked on my door the other day and he's like do you need a financial advisor i said first of all <laughs> what is on your door yes <laughs> they're selling financial advice door to door. door to door there's actually i won't name the name but there's a there's a financial brokerage that's famous for it they're like evangelic you know evangelical finance proselytizing yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my god door to door probably like i don't know i i hate to make it feel like a conspiracy but sometimes they look for the elderly Oh, hundred like, percent. They look for the weak. They look for a person who's like looking a little confused and like just wants somebody to talk. To I them. mean, here's something that I 
like it's I love saying this because it's like it kind of it makes a lot of sense but you know you get the like Nigerian spam like yeah. the you know I'm holding your child <laughs> ransom oh, yeah. um, uh, while he is in front of me like right but it's an email and it's riddled <laughs> with errors yeah. and like clearly they didn't go through Grammarly like it's so okay. bad it's actually intentionally poorly written, written yeah. because they want the people who are just so oblivious to respond yeah. because that's like their litmus test. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. If you're actually going to respond to my extremely poorly written email that is so blatantly, obviously spam then we got a good one yeah like we could steal all their money yeah, going for the for the weak link yeah. I, and it makes sense okay so as we wrap up this episode because we learned so much and i i, I want to end this on a fun note so what is a one money splurge that makes no sense oh my gosh that makes no sense logically but it's so worth it for each one of us okay i want to hear one thing that like makes no sense but you're like you know what i'm just gonna spend it because i want to okay and we can go if anybody can start. you want to start okay concerts but that's okay. not ridiculous no, no, that's it's completely ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> sorry i forgot what show i was on okay <laughs> that is completely ridiculous yeah, yeah, yeah. he knows it makes no sense he even knows did you see that mm-hmm. he, he okay no don't to stop giving I'm him sorry, the I'm side eye of water. approval <laughs> okay. she's trying to like approve oh like God. no concert unless it's an Indian concert A.R. Rahman <laughs> yeah go me? for that Shahrukh Khan let's go for that you know actually I think that if it's a concert you and I can go to together or you and your dad can go to I, I'm in on <laughs> that's that. not a fun concert that you guys that's are gonna what? go to all the concerts that I go you guys would never want to go to like festivals yeah, yeah I'm not going that's the one thing that I think is just yeah like, he wants I think it's worth spending the money I think it's Rolling crazy Rolling Loud think it's you worth know it. what that is I went to Rolling Loud that's a it festival incredible. it was like the, that was the greatest moment of my life oh no, my god greatest three days of my life. no it was absolutely there's no way it can be but it, the greatest moment of your life was when you got your SAT score and you were so happy <laughs> that, yeah no, right the greatest moment of my life was in Rolling Loud and Veer, you have something that you would spend money on? Like, it makes no sense, but you want to do it. Sometimes when I go places with my friends, I go to, like, let's say I go to Target or some, like, convenience store. Yeah. Um. Sometimes I'm just there to have fun. So I'll just buy random things to... Yeah. I feel you anything. so hard. Oh, yeah. Like what? I, I I can't think of anything on the top of my head, but even if I'm like not like some people call it a happy. Yeah, I bought the world's spiciest gummy bear yesterday. People, and I ate there's it. a name for what you, you buy. You bought the world's spiciest gummy bear. Yeah, I ate it at Target. No, I bought oh. it at a different store. It was just some candy store. Okay. All right. There's a name for this. Well, someone said to me once, "Oh, I took my kids to Target and we just went to go get some happies." I said, what? what the heck is a happy? What's a happy? What? He goes, it's like a $5 thingamajig, whatever. Like, that's our what? budget. We go to Target. <laughs> it's our adventure. It's our experience. You know, oh. Target is like, yeah. you know, you just you go. It's like a treasure it's hunt like, almost. It's like within <laughs> budget. It's like a treasure hunt. Exactly. Oh, actually, call it a happy. Can I ask one, one question real quick? And yeah. then we can go back to this. Okay. So there's this big thing like that just popped up out of my life called Timu. It's, a, oh, it's, right. an, yeah. it's an app where like. You can buy these like clothing, like it's the same thing I'm wearing and everything will cost like a dollar. Like the shirt, it would be like $2. Pants would be like $8. Like they sell everything for like mm-hmm. the My friend bought cheap prices I've ever AirPods seen. Off wait, wait, like where $20. are they making this stuff? China. Yeah, I so don't know. So what are your thoughts on that? I don't like it. I don't like anything where I'm like skeptical of the price, where I'm like, how is this beautiful dress $13 full price. You know, I just, unless it's a brand that I know and you know, that's fast fashion, you got to be careful, right? Because who's like, what are they exploiting? Who are they exploiting to make that? So like, I talk about this all the time. Like, would I rather get th- like your three very low quality shirts for like a cheap price or one thing that's like a little bit more expensive, but you can keep forever? The latter. I do think, I mean, it's hard to like, I think when you're young and you're just making young adult money, it's hard to convince yourself to make the investment. Also, you have to, you know, like it's a lot. I remember, I remember the first time I ever bought a pair of shoes for more than a hundred dollars. I was like, am I really doing this? Is this happening? But I had probably bought 12 pairs of $39 shoes, (laughs) right? That lasted me four weeks. So you live and you learn. And I think that I say this now with the wisdom of my age, that you are much better off long-term investing in quality pieces. Our culture, we want to look, like wear a new outfit all the time. So I think, um, 
you know, it's a lifestyle, but I, rent the runway and those kinds of sites make it so that maybe you can live a little, have a little bit more of a variety in your wardrobe and not feel like you're, you know, spending all that money. You know, a friend of mine uh, gave me a quote 20 years ago that actually, Shala, my husband lives by, it take, took me a while to learn. She said, I'm too poor to buy cheap stuff. Oh. Because cheap stuff, yeah. it turns over. Like sh she was of the mindset that you buy the one thing that you really love, that you've researched, that you've been, and then you hold on to it, you take care yeah. of it. And I think there is something with that, but, but it, it is, it's a conflicting way, how we live. Like you can't even take a photo in the same shirt I mean, over and over again. That's like yeah. less is more, less is more. I'm a, at a place in my life where we were just talking about this before we yeah, got yeah, yeah. Like if someone was like, here's $10 million. I mean, I wouldn't be mad about it. Yeah. But oh. I also feel like we live in a culture where the excitement and the anticipation, like the enthusiasm about making more money is so that you can go out and get more stuff. Yeah. And I would rather... I just don't want it. I don't want a bigger house. I don't want more cars. I don't want more things. I would like to get more experiences. I would like to travel more. I'd like to donate See experiences, more. Concerts. Yeah, investing in my hard. health, investing in my kids' health. You know, these things I feel like are maybe not, they don't give you the immediate ROI, but that is the stuff yeah. that makes life great. And no one dies going, I'm so glad I bought that purse, you know, but I'm so glad I went to Greece. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> How do we come back to this vacation that I disagree with so much? Or India or, you know. No, India, I'm going to come back to. We will finish with yeah. India. Shala, what would be your splurge that makes no sense, but you just want to do it? You agree with it. I guess upgrading my wife's economy ticket to business. Yeah. On the way to South Africa. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, there's no way. This is... Can you sit in economy and she sits in business? Yeah. You're a good oh, man. Oh my God. Oh my God. Not... <laughs> did we just not just come back from Montreal where I sat in economy? Did I or did I not? Oh did. my God. And where did mom sit? But that was because the per the people paid for her oh ticket. Oh like my God. I'm he is saying. just to have America fall in love with them. It's, how it's working. This guy is just so manipulative. You don't even freaking know what you're up against. <laughs> Upgrading my wife. Oh my God. And the thing is that he would pay for it. He would. Like we've actually been that couple that have fought and I'm like, I don't want it. Because I really, I would actually honestly pay the airlines a little less money to stand in the bathroom. If I could, <laughs> yes. I'd be like, I don't even want to sit. I'm fine standing for a few hours. Like, like, give me a discount. Yeah. Like, you know, an ex extra leg room. They do extra leg room. I would be like, I sit crisscross applesauce. Like, can I get some money back? I don't even want the leg room. Seriously. You're giving me. Well, then you would do well of flying in Europe because you know what? Yeah. They, they squeeze. You like the yeah. Those, yeah no. They actually like sell tickets standing room only. On I the saw that. Uh, right. No. That was good. There is no, no they do not. It's up. a lot cheaper. Yeah. Though. I think it's it was a. Uh, gosh, I forget the name. Ryanair. Yeah. It was, no, I, saw I don't that. know yeah, if they're that. still doing about, this, yeah. but they were, some seats were like standing only and then you had to pay it a quarter to use the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> this is my dream airline. <laughs> uh, don't kill the messenger. Yeah, Ryanair, yeah, do you need a, do you I need mean, a look, spokesperson? Don't sue I'm me. I don't know if this is still true. This was like maybe many years well, ago. Maybe it, it made the news. Maybe yeah. it needs to come back. Yeah. <laughs> so for Noosh, you want to go oh next? Gosh. You want, yeah. So, I mean, I'd like to think that everything I spend is with intention and, oh, and, and, and it is purpose. I mean, I agree. All of the things you've said, I spend money on these things. I spend money for more convenience at the airport, I will, you know, I will send, I will, you know, here's what I do. I will sign my kids up for random activities. Yeah. I don't care what it costs. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But if it that. frees up my time, yes. even if I have to take them there, but I can sit on a sofa or even a four legged chair and be on my Instagram and just, or just stare at a, like a wall like that, right. That's my life right now. That's my stage. It's my jam. I just want time yeah. back. And so yes. I will do it. I will spend the dumb money. Yes. And my kids will hate me because like, why, why are we in a rock climbing gym? But you know what? <laughs> no. That, yes. Go climb it. Mom is free. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Climb it all day. <laughs> Ideally, yeah. there's a day pass and you're going up yeah. and down all day long. I was like, just bring the kids back in one piece. <laughs> yeah. I'll be sitting here on my foam couch. I'm so with you. And I like, we famously disagree, my husband and I, but Uber is my 
biggest luxury because it, I use it as a back street. Back it's also office. probably a tax deduction. Uh, I mean, if uh, you're going it, to something businessy, is it? Is it not? Oh, I don't know. But you know what I mean. I'm doing it, and and I would say the one expense that probably doesn't make sense, but I'm gonna do it anyway, is that I would rather fly to India and visit my in-laws at their house. Then have them come to me. Oh, wow! <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because then once they come here, yeah, they in your home, <laughs> and then you gotta do. Why are you laughing? Because the way you're describing this, no, like, she knows. <laughs> but you know, I'm now at a stage where I I fly my parents to my house. Oh yeah, I would do because I'm like. No, we're not getting on a flight on Thanksgiving week with two little kids and the flight's never going to be there anyway. And then suddenly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate yeah, my that's life. So but that's your parents. That's a different thing. Yeah, but they're also retired. So yeah. they don't have to come. I have certain weeks I can travel during the year. Like I have not a lot of flexibility. They right. can come whenever. And so right. it's much cheaper. But I would like take the flight, visit them, you know, whatever needed and then as you can always leave I, right because i can control the time i mean that's also even meeting with people i love meeting them in coffee shops yeah because then i yeah, they don't so have true. to hang around my house for hours oh, i don't yeah. have to hang around their house for hours i hate it when people are like come over you're I'm following like, no, them around no, with oh. coasters yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know what i mean it yeah. feels like a big but anyway this was so fun did you have a good time i mean we're gonna get dinner after this right yeah <laughs> and by the way since we all agree who's that paying mom is, oh <laughs> i'm paying right but i asked d d listen that depends on wh whether you're hungry whether you're actually gonna order something <laughs> what are you eating are you vegan do you drink shade grain coffee like it depends there's a yeah. lot of factors but this was so fun so great thank I you for inviting everybody me everybody had fun with farnoosh with my family if you haven't picked up this book yet you can pre-order it right now healthy state of panic and i live in a state of panic which is why i connected so yeah. deep and hard with farnoosh but my family kind of needed to hear from her directly how right i am about all things money and i'm so glad that you thank came here you. to do that for thank you for me and so for congrats on your show this is so fun are you I, having fun yeah i think it's a really fun i well, love the podcast are you having fun <laughs> yeah well, he's a cutie I, that was a little forced, but we'll take it. Yeah. How about yeah. you, Shalab? Are you? Best time of my life. <laughs> Honestly, I was born to do just this. He, I mean, he's kind of, America's falling in love with Shalab. You know, oh my God. I, I'm really so considering giving up my day job because what is the point of being a hedge funder if I can do this all day? Are you making fun I'm of not, us? Do I look like British that I'm making fun? <clears throat> no. We do this. You look very it's serious. So do you know she's a serious podcaster? This, there is a career and that's a whole another topic. But yeah. there is a career doing this. Of course. Because like he sometimes will make fun of me. Like, oh, this I, is the I, job. I've never made fun. I, like, what is she talking about? Yeah, yeah, I've oh, never oh, heard oh yes, America, you. you heard it right. He's mean underneath the surface. And okay, now you're just trying to make him a villain. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Please leave a comment. Please leave, uh, subscribe to our channel. I don't even know how to do this. Subscribe to the thing. Leave a comment. I want to bring you on board. Questions, ask me questions. We're following everything because I'm obsessive like that. I'm sure you are. Too. Oh, yeah. We're, we're obsessed like that. So when you comment something and leave it, we pour over it to try to make our podcast. Uh, podcast better mostly we ignore the comment after we read it but sometimes we try to like pay attention also talk to each other in the comments too that's always fun oh yeah fight with each other yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. please fight with each other actually <laughs> yeah all right bye namaste bye.